I can't be the only one who, having seen the movies, still doesn't have a clue about the layout of Hogwarts. There are a few recurring features, yet even these seem to change every movie, and there are various blogs covering this phenomenon. I'm sure the optimistic answer to why all these changes occur is magic, but I suspect what actually happened is that the director would occasionally look at a shot and decided it would look better if there was a view of Hogwarts in the background, and doing this every scene resulted in a place that couldn't really exist. But the game Hogwarts Legacy tackles these difficult decisions and attempts to lay out a definitive vision of Hogwarts and its surrounding features. Let's see how it stacks up to the movies. We'll start at the very beginning, with Harry and co arriving at Hogsmeade Station in the Philosopher's Stone. Oh sorry, Sorcerer's Stone for all you Americans. There are a few differences between the one in the game and the one in the movies. The game's one only has one train track, compared with two in the movie, and the stone bridge from the game is swapped out for a metal one. But considering the game took place 100 years before the movie, we can just say it got renovated at some point between. What I love about this game is that it bothers to accurately chart the route from the station to Hogwarts. If I raise my stick, you can see Hogwarts in the distance, bearing a striking resemblance to how it appears in the movies when they first arrive. But don't worry, we'll get a better view than this. First of all, we have to figure out how they got from the train station to the lake. I doubt they went in a straight line since there are cliffs and stuff in the way, and unless Hagrid wants the blood of hundreds of first years splattering to the sandy shores far below like lemmings in a Disney documentary, I suspect they took the stairs instead. This would have led them through a bit of woodland, past a few magic mushrooms, and onto this bit here which veers around and down to the boat station beneath. Now I don't think they took a direct route to the castle from here. Instead, it seems like they veered round to the left, perhaps to dodge a scary octopus, since the view from the shore further around was the closest I could get to recreating what is now perhaps the most iconic view ever of Hogwarts. Peaked early, didn't it? Try to ignore that invisible looking person in the bottom left hand corner for now and appreciate just how much these two depictions match up. I'm sure there are many differences between them which I'll be going through, but the first impressions are good with the game remaining surprisingly faithful to the original movie's positioning of stuff, and also to their scale. Take a look at the Grand Tower, that's the big girthy one that pokes off the top of the screen. I'd say the two versions look similar in terms of size and floor count, though I will say the bit poking out the side looks a bit more impressive and ridiculous in the game. The Grand Hall is down here next to it, which looks about the same in both versions. But one area in which these are very different is this bit. There's no viaduct courtyard in the first movie, although it does show up in later ones. It's just the Grand Hall building leading right up to the edge of the cliff. The second movie clearly shows the path going down to the boathouse, which leads straight on from the end of the building. But then, as if by magic, Hogwarts grows a new courtyard, which is seen in a number of the movies. And then, in the last movie, this courtyard grows even more by adding this extra bridge just here, which reaches from the viaduct courtyard to the outside world. In the original movie, this would have looked a bit like this, and we can see in the game that if this bridge did exist then it wouldn't make any sense and I'm not sure where it would connect up to. It's just odd that when it comes to the last movie, this was the clear main entrance to Hogwarts, and from where everybody attacked from. I guess people had had enough of reaching it by boat every time, or from the back entrance, which I'll touch in a bit. The boathouse down here is in roughly the same spot, though it looks like the game uses the more elaborate style that's seen in later movies instead. Anybody still lamenting Snape's death can rejoice, for you can relive that moment step by step. You probably don't remember because the movie was dark as hell, but Harry and the others traversed a very long and sprawling set of stairs in order to get down to reach the boathouse. The game devs must have had a hell of a time trying to see what they were trying to recreate, but they managed it in hunts. And here's how it looks in game, again made difficult by the controlling camera angles which forbid you look up or down, and I thought this was a free country. But if I freeze it right here and compare it with the movie, then you can see that it looks mightily similar. Great job Legacy. And the boathouse itself has had its backside faithfully touched up to look similar, though the game has a few extra fiery thingies either side since this was clearly back in the days before health and safety. The best view I got inside the boathouse was from this behind the scenes shot. And clearly this was the one that the game devs must have based their version of because it's virtually identical, though again the game has a few extra fires and doesn't yet have a life boy. And you just know that some terrible things must have happened down here in order for these changes to have been made. Just you wait, and no snakes policy will be next. This bridge that can be seen in the movie version can't be seen in the games, though it is still there somewhere, tucked out of sight. I'll just quickly fly on over there to prove that. Yeah, that's close enough. And as for the rest of Hogwarts, this load of buildings here takes up roughly the same area but appears pointier in the game, again borrowing from the later movies where the style of Hogwarts gets more gothic and depressing, sort of like a place you wouldn't want your kids going, as opposed to the earlier movies, which still wouldn't pass an Ofsted inspection but hopefully wouldn't murder your child. 
There is a courtyard right slap bang in the centre of Hogwarts, shown in this fly through from the second movie. And here it is in the game. It's got a few more roof terraces dotted around it, and a few more trees inside it, but this is most definitely the same area, with the Defence Against the Dark Arts building to the left, and the first of six gobstones hidden on the roof just here. Spoiler alert. Now most of Hogwarts is shown from the front angle, presumably because it's the most impressive. But what's behind? This area that separates front from back is the greenhouse area. You first get a good look at this place in the second movie when they uprooted the mandrakes, but whereas the movie depicts it as a bunch of standard looking greenhouses around both sides of this corner of Hogwarts, the game condenses it all down to a single, much larger greenhouse with a fancier design. Which I prefer. Just around from this is where people learn to ride their brooms. I say this because it's where you learn in the game, and sort of makes sense in the movies as well, even though this part of Hogwarts looks very different in later movies. Rewatching the scene from the first one, they're careful not to show what's beyond these walls, presumably because there isn't really Hogwarts behind these walls, and they couldn't be bothered to rotoscope it all in. <sighs> but yeah, I'm fairly confident by how this is portrayed in the game, with all these people grabbing their shaft right here, that it's where it's meant to be in the first movie where Draco's all mean and stuff. Time to zoom out and to take an overview of this area. From left to right, this is the greenhouse where Neville fainted from a plant screaming, this is the courtyard where Neville fell off a broomstick and broke his arm, and this is the rickety walkway where Neville single-handedly defended against the forces of darkness. This behind section of Hogwarts is a part that I don't think was fully fleshed out until the third movie, and that ruined a lot of logic here. For instance, it's Whomping Willow time! It's incredible that this game has only been out for a week or so, and yet the Google is already full of people asking where this tree is. Spoiler, it isn't, because it wasn't even planted when this game took place. I mean, that's their excuse, but I still think they should have added it in. But why the hell would you plant something like this on school property? The movies cannot agree where this thing is. In the second movie, it's shown within Hogwarts's walls, which I'd put as being roughly here on the map, just a flick of a broomstick away from where the 11 year olds are learning to fly. But I guess somebody at Hogwarts thought this was a bad idea, because unless there are two of these things, in the third movie it's moved further away from Hogwarts. Sensible choice, although it still manages a 2-0 KD ratio against Harry, and a rare victory over Hermione, making it perhaps the most formidable adversary in all of Harry Potter. But I digress. Where is Hagrid's hut? The game matches up with the third movie's depiction almost perfectly. You leave Hogwarts over the rickety bridge, out of a small stone building at the end, and then it's immediately downhill from the surrounding circle of rocks that you now find yourself stood inside. But look beyond the hut, and that's where the sources start to deviate. In the game, it's right next to the lake that Hogwarts is sat on. But in the Half-Blood Prince movie, I can't see what's going on, it's too dark, but in the Prisoner of Azkaban, there's clearly no lake nearby to speak of. It's situated on the outskirts of the Forbidden Forest. But in the game, as you can see from the world map, the Forbidden Forest is on the exact other side of Hogwarts from Hagrid's hut. What gives? Of course, I'm not too serious. The makers of Hogwarts Legacy have done a spectacular job of trying to piece together not just the movies, but also the book's rendition of Hogwarts. That must have been like trying to piece together three different jigsaws, knowing that they won't be able to please everybody all the time. But I'd be surprised if anybody was disappointed with what they've achieved in this game, and if they didn't find at least a few places that made them feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And it's helped me, because I've already learned more about Hogwarts layout from a dozen hours spent in this game than I did from the years I spent watching the movies. But there's one last, burning question that every true, passionate fan of Harry Potter has, a thought that has been on our minds ever since we saw that magical scene. When Gandalf gets pwned by Snape in the Half-Blood Prince, from where does he get fatally blasted from, and where does his mangled corpse land? Those, my friend, are the two million dollar questions. That adds up to about two million dollars, or about ten million pounds the way this country's headed. And those two questions are not easy ones to answer. So the first one, where did he fall from? Well, he fell from the Astronomy Tower, which is, of course, the tallest tower at Hogwarts, because he wanted this death to be stunning. But the crime scene itself does not make any sense. Put it simply, Dumbledore, Snape, evil cronies. Harry. Put it simply, if Snape had murdered Dumbledore the way that Harry claimed happened, then he would be blasted straight through this window on the far left of the observatory. This window from outside. Now, watch this. Doesn't look much like this, does it? Plus, it's in the middle of nowhere. No one would have heard his body crumpling to the ground through the thick walls of Hogwarts. His body in this position would likely go unfound for days, weeks maybe. But, say Dumbledore was hit by a second Nevada Cadavera at the exact same moment as the first, one that struck him from the side and from below. Follow me down from here. Bingo. 
This side, courtyard. The other side, no courtyard. This side, courtyard. Harry. He's seen what the Elder One can do. He knows the killing curses and that none of his friends would suspect him. Motive, means and opportunity. Now I'm not saying it was him, but something just doesn't add up, you know? 